How is it guys? Uh, Bungani, uh, welcome to College United Engineering and uh, today we'll be doing sequence 3. So remember last time we did sequence 1, sequence 2, today we are on sequence 3. Um, sequence 3, it's a little bit tricky but it's not tricky. Always remember, it just needs you to understand the statement and then you'll be able to draw. So this is what the statement is saying. It's saying that uh, motor 2 cannot start before motor 1. So your motor 2 cannot start unless you start this motor 1. Then the second statement says that motor 1 cannot be stopped unless motor 2 is stopped. And motor 2 can stop on its own. So this is what is happening. You, you first have to start mode one before you can start mode two. So when both are running, you cannot stop mode one without stopping mode two. But you can stop mode two on its own. And mode one will still continue to run. Okay. So this is the control circuit. No, this is the main circuit. Main circuit remains the same most of the times. You can pause the video, look at the video. You can also look at the previous video for this main circuit. Main circuit remains the same. So you can just pause the video there and look at it. So now, here comes what, call, or, uh, what people call tricky. I, love to, I like to call it uh, the easy part. Here comes the easy part. And remember what I said, you always draw your DOL first. Draw your direct, you have your line here. And then you have your 95, you have your 96, overload one. You have your 95, you have your 96, overload two. And then you have your emergency stop. And remember, always the emergency stop must stop everything. Remember what I said. Always first draw your direct online on both of them. Then you can come and do whatever that you need to do. And then... Okay. Stop one. And then you'll have your start button here. Normally open of key one, you have your key one. Goes to a line or a neutral. Key one, A1, A2. Uh, stop two, and then you have your start button. Okay, let's draw the start button here. You have your A1, you have your A2, K2, K2. Normally open of K2, 18, 14, 18, 14, 3, 4, 3, 4. Yeah, I think then here we can see this side is for motor 1, this side is for motor 2. So this is your control circuit. But the statement says that you cannot start motor 2 before starting motor 1. And motor Two must be able to stop on its own independently. So it means that we'll still put it here. We're going to put, just like a sequence number two, we'll introduce a normal open of K1 so that you start this motor after you've started motor, uh, motor one. You can start motor two after starting motor one. And you can be able to stop motor one. And once you stop motor two, motor uh, once you stop motor one, motor two won't be affected. But now the statement says again, uh, motor one, your motor one cannot be stopped unless motor two is stopped. 
So, your motor one, it cannot be stopped until you stop this one. And this one, motor two, cannot start until you start motor one. So we've already put a normal open of K1 so that uh, Moto 2 start after you have started Moto 1. But now, for us to be able to um, stop uh, Moto, Moto 1, we have to stop Moto 2 first. And then we'll do that by including or, or, or putting a normally open. Normally open of K2 on the stop button. So on the stop button, we are putting a normally open of K2. So this is what will happen. Um, the first thing I will do, we press the stop button, uh, no, the start button. Okay, let me just say start, start two, start one. So if I press this start button, it becomes a normal close. Uh, current runs, this one becomes energized. When this one becomes energized, remember, here it close. Now, I can be able to start this motor. Now the motor is running. But remember one thing again. Immediately when this one energizes, the, when this coil energizes, also this one will close from normal open to normally close. So it's now a normally closed contact on the stop button. So if you come to your stop button, if you press it, you try to stop motor one, it won't stop because of now, current is able to escape this other side. So the only way to stop this motor is if you stop this one. So if this one is stopped, it's no longer running, then here there will be a normal open of K2, now it's become a normally open instead of normally closed. So if you press and stop, now current can run that side because of that side also, it's open. So that's it, it's not tricky, simple. Okay, let me put it on is the normal state. And yeah, the normal state is like this. So that's it, yeah. So, um, let's see, your, your motor one, your motor two. So the most important thing that you have to understand um, is that uh, when you have a contact of a motor one on the side of motor two, it means that when con a motor one uh, when the call of contact one is energized. It means that contact on Moto2 or on the side of uh, Moto2, it has to change its position, either normally close or normally open. So here, we have put a normally open of K2 so that even if you stop Moto1, current will be able to escape this other side. Once this one is energized, this one closes. And that's it. Let's meet on the next uh, video. I think we have about um, six sequences left, or uh, 10. Yeah, we still have a little bit more. And uh, this video, we just only uh, draw and explain. We'll have another video where I actually connect and show you everything, and we do the overload setting and stuff. This is just the basic the introduction to make you understand and then we'll move to the higher stuff. God bless.